Hey, what's up, Military Millionaires? So, I'm here today with my buddy, John, who some of you may know, John Lalonde, he's the guy that I, well, he's basically the lender that I refer a whole lot of people to because he's awesome. Um, he's also my roommate and was a recon dude. And so I wanted to talk real quick about how powerful the intention journal was, because if you go through here, you'll see that for the last like two weeks, I've written like video with John, video with John. Oh, what's that? It says John video. John video. Got so, it. Um, and we're doing it. Look at that. It's like a vision board. Shit happens. Two um, weeks later. <laughs> but look, so I actually wrote down questions and shit in the back. A crap that gets thrown around about VA loans um, and lenders that some lenders that just don't say things that are very uh, legit and there's bad info. So we just kind of wanted to touch on a few of the topics that are common right now. Things that well, things that either drive me nuts or drive him nuts or just bad gouge and just kind of answer some questions. So this is not a like all things being VA loan video. I've got a whole playlist that you can go through with those. Uh, if you want more questions, I'll put his contact info down below um, so you can bug him, not me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, so um, the first thing is, and we see this all the time right now, I got locked in at 2.75, but someone said that I should go for two and a quarter. What do you think? And so my thought, long and short is, look at the history. Loans have been as high as 16, 17%, and now they're as low as 2.75. Do you want to bet that you're going to beat the historical low and go down to 1% or whatever? Or do you want to just realize that 2.75 is fucking awesome and you, the odds are it's going to swing farther the other way. So anyway. And I've got two things on that. So one of the biggest things is take a look at who's telling you that they can get you down to a 2.25 or a 2.5. And then think about this. You're in escrow. You're already under contract. And we've seen this a lot where people are already locked in. They're 15 days into a 30 day escrow. Do you really want to lose the deal? over a quarter of a percent, half of a percent rate. When in reality, let's say that rates do go lower, which they may or they may not, no one really knows, but you still have the interest rate reduction loan. Yeah. Now, do you wanna roll the dice and see if this lender who's just quoting you without seeing any of your financials is able to get you down to this 2.5, 2.25 and see if he's gonna close your deal on time or see if he's even gonna be able to close your deal at all. If that's something that you're willing to risk, then go for it, but I personally wouldn't do it. Yeah, and I, he brushed over it, but I wanna to touch real quick that if a lender gives you a quote, like tells you I can get you this rate, and you haven't given them all your financials yet, and they haven't pulled your credit yet, like, I mean, realistically, that's illegal because they don't know your situation. They're just promising, what they're doing is they're promising you something and then they're getting you into the funnel. And then by the time you're 10 days into this thing, they'll say, oh man, I know we said 2.25, but I can get you 2.8. Like the odds are you're probably gonna stay with them instead of going and shopping around because you've already done all this crap and you're already into a contract. So I, one of the first things I ask a lender when I look at talking to them is, hey, what rate can I get? And because I wanna know, like if they tell me, oh, I can get you this rate without knowing anything about me, then they're probably not someone I wanna work with. Um, now, if they, now, if they give you like a, yeah, I'm seeing kind of this is like the trend or, or this is the prime rate right now, or is it prime par, whatever, I don't know, random lender terms. But if they tell you like, this is kind of the average or this is kind of what we're seeing, like, okay, got it. But if they give you a quote. And here's a big thing too, is I get asked, what's the VA interest rate today? Or what's the conventional interest rate today? And the thing I have to explain is the, the interest rate really depends on the strength of the borrower. So, and there's, there's so many other things that go into it, um, such as if you're doing conventional and you're buying a condo versus a single family, there's gonna be a rate adjustment. You can go look if you're really interested at all of the loan level price adjustments for each loan product, and you can see what will affect your rate and what won't. What credit score you need to be at this rate, 30 year versus 15 year, 10 and 20. Those are all things that your lender has to actually know before he's able to give you an actual rate and an actual quote. And then on top of that, nothing really matters until you have a signed purchase and sale agreement. Once you have a signed purchase and sale agreement, then you can start looking at rate. But what a lot of people do, and I work with a lot of people that uh, have previously worked at call centers such as Loan Depot or a, a few others that I won't mention, but they're trained 
they get that. That's the first question they get. What are your interest rates? They're trained to just throw out a number. So throw out a number that will keep someone interested, get someone to get their credit in, and then whatever, by the time they actually get down to giving the actual rate, they can just say that the rates changed due to that day. They can say a, a variety of different things, but the fact of the matter is you're probably already too late. So just something to take in consideration. Um, if you are gonna look, make sure you have a purchase and sale agreement and the lender's quoting you based off of your finances and your scenario, not just the VA interest rate. If you have someone that says the VA interest rate is this today, he probably doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, so what about points? Tell us a little bit about people don't seem to understand how points work with loans. So points, you'll hear them referred to as discount points. And for some reason, a lot of people right now are, are hearing you, you don't wanna pay points. There's never pay any points, the points are bad. And the reality is um, it really depends on your situation. So let's say that you're doing a, a VA purchase and you're already down to a 2.875 and in order to get down to a 2.75 based off your scenario, you have to pay 40, 40 basis points. So basically 40% of a percent. And that equals out to $1,000. Let's just throw some, some random numbers out there. Well, we're gonna look at how long do you plan on keeping the property? Do you plan on keeping the property for six months? Do you, which you shouldn't if it's a VA loan, but if it's a, you know, a year or, or two years or five years, we're gonna look at that. So if you say, you know, I'm, I'm only being stationed here for three years and then, I'm, and then I'm gonna sell it, then we'll look at that. Okay, how long will it take to recoup those discount points to where after they cover themselves, everything else is pure savings? And it may make sense, it may, may, it may not. I personally paid thirteen to $14,000 in points because interest rates a year ago were in the fours and I wanted, it made sense to me. Um, now, no one was planning this huge interest rate drop. No one can predict what rates are actually gonna do. So I didn't take into consider, in consideration the uh, interest rate reduction loan. And you know, it, what, did it make sense? If I would have done the interest rate reduction loan, probably would have made more sense to do that anyway. Yeah. But as far as paying discount points, it's not always a terrible idea. It just depends on your situation. And one thing to take into consideration is there is that interest rate reduction loan. So if you are worried about rates going lower in the next seven to 12 months, you're, that's always available. You just have to wait 210 days in order to do that interest rate reduction loan. Cool. And yeah, I got nothing to add there. Awesome. Uh, processes, systems, and closing times. How does that matter and why? Okay, so let's say you're, you're in a market like this current market, which everyone's seeing, if you look at San Diego, Fresno, you know, the Bay Area, Denver, um, all, all places that I'm actively seeing 10, 12, 14 offers in, the, in one day. Now, what matters to these sellers? They wanna know that you're a strong buyer, that you're going to close, and that it's going to be done quickly. Because you gotta think, they're taking their house off the market. They're not accepting any more offers. They wanna go with someone that's gonna close. They don't wanna take it off the market just to go through the inspection period and fall out of escrow. That's not something that they wanna do. So what they want is short contingency periods. So when you're picking a lender, yes, obviously pick a lender with a good rate. But if you're picking a lender that's doing a 60-day close and a 15, 20, 30-day loan contingency, it's probably gonna be pretty hard to get an accepted offer in a competitive market. Now, if you're in a market like, uh, let's say, New Orleans and Louisiana, and you're not seeing that, maybe it's less important, but right now what we're seeing is multiple offers in the same day, and they're competitive offers. You're gonna have 15-day conventional closes, you're gonna have cash offers. In order to compete with a VA loan, which they can be very competitive, it's something that a lot of people don't understand, is it the active duty military, your pay's not going anywhere. If you can just get short contingency dates and you can tell those sellers, hey, in 10 days from now, you will know that the only way we're falling out of escrow is if it's something due to the house. Yeah. We have loan approval in 10 days. You're gonna be competitive. You're gonna be able to offer a lower purchase price or get in the home that you actually wanna get into. So just something to take in consideration with contingency dates. And when you're picking a lender, 
pick someone that's actually competitive and not someone that just can say that they can get you a good rate. Yeah, and so a, a lot of times what we hear is, is from realtors or in competitive markets is that the VA loan is not competitive. People, they get a bad rap for whether it's because something came up in the inspection or the lender couldn't close or whatever. And that's, you, I don't know what the right way to say this is. So we didn't talk about this before because I don't want, I don't know what his, he's allowed to say and not allowed to say because he's actually got a license and I'm just a schmuck. But uh, in my professional, unprofessional uh, opinion, not fact, but opinion, um, lenders that market strictly to veterans seem to fucking suck. So Veterans United, garbage. I, they, they own the market for VA loans, but they added fees, extra closing costs, long closing times, Navy, Federal, love them, put, love, love them to death. They're, they're my business bank. They're great. Not good with closing VA loans. USAA, same thing. There's some others. There's even a, a veteran communities that, you know, with, with real estate, like there's there's a couple different lenders out there that they cater to military and I don't know if that's a correlation or a causation, but they don't seem to do very good. So I, I, I like, like, I don't know, like his, his branch does everything. Like he specializes in VA loans, but they close everything. So I don't know if that's, if there's a, anything to that or if that's just me feeling or if you're even allowed to talk about that, but that's what I've noticed. I mean, so. I, I, so I won't say anything negative about any other companies, but one thing I will say is probably one of the best lenders that I know in, in California. And I think you know who I'm Nick. talking to too. Yeah, he's yeah. not a veteran. And there's a lot of lenders that aren't veterans that crush it with VA loans. Um, Scott Evans is a huge one. You'll see him all over if you're yeah. stationed around Camp Pendleton nothing but great things you hear about him and he's I don't know I don't know if he's a veteran or not but it doesn't yeah. matter so just because someone's not a veteran or just because someone is a veteran doesn't necessarily mean that they're not a good VA lender they're gonna learn the lingo they're gonna know what BAH is they're gonna know what PCSing is because they've been working with veterans for years yeah so just because someone's not a veteran doesn't mean that they're not gonna be a good VA lender and especially vice versa just because someone's a veteran doesn't mean they're going to be a good VA lender. Doesn't mean that they're going to be the best realtor that works with VA loans. It doesn't mean that. So find someone that's good based off of their actual business, not just because they were in the Navy for four years or, or they were... Or they were in the Marine Corps for 25 years and they've been a lender for two years, but they're a veteran and the other guy's been a lender for 20 years. Who do you think you should work with? A new guy? You know, I don't know. Like... Take take a lot of things into consideration. It doesn't the, the title veteran doesn't automatically mean someone's good at their job. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but very true. True. Hey, uh, I'm supposed to tell you to like click the little button over here and subscribe, and uh, do it. <laughs> if if John was able to help you out, let him know. Comment down below or whatever. I'll put his contact info. We're gonna try to do a few more videos on the VA loan. There's a couple other things out there that we want to touch on, but those are gonna be better formatted. This is just a few questions. Hope you got something out of it. Have a great day and insert whatever my catchphrase is <laughs> right here.